take this time to thank you for joining us today. Uh, we're going to talk about something very important, education and country living. So before we start, shall we close our eyes for a word of prayer? Father in heaven, we thank you so much for your loving kindness. The lessons we've heard on country living has been so practical and useful. And we ask as we discuss the issues of education in the country, uh, how to do them. May you bless us and guide us. May your Holy Spirit be showered upon us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. The issue of education has been one of the key issues that has kept people in the big cities. And the big question is, well, if I go to a farm, live in a country, how will my children be educated? And what benefits are there uh, in the country? So that is an issue that we want to look at um, in our study today. And before we look at this in more detail, I would like us to read a few statements from the Pen of Inspiration. This is from Mind, Character and Personality, Volume 1, page 53. Now as never before, we need to understand the true science of education. If we fail to understand this, we shall never have a place in the kingdom of God. This is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. If this is the price of heaven, shall not our education be conducted on these lines? If we fail to understand the true science of education, she says, we shall not have a place in the kingdom of heaven. So this is a very important matter that is salvific. Uh, experience in true education is such an important part uh, that um, Ellen White is talking about here. Then she says, true education is to know and to do the will of God. So this is true education. I'm not going to go into uh, various definitions. If you're interested in studying more about these principles of true education, how they work, what they are, uh, you can actually go to our website, www.purelightmissions.org. Uh, there is a module there on true education. And that's not my point. My point is not to share with you all that but to discuss the concepts of true education in the light of country living. When we go to the book of Genesis at the beginning, in the book of Genesis, we find a very interesting verse that we find in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7 and 8. Genesis 2, verse 7 and 8, the Bible says, And the Lord God formed the man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. There he put the man whom he had formed. So one thing that we noted over and over is that when man was created, he was put inside a garden. And that's a very important uh, point that we need to make, that uh, we were supposed to be gardeners. God intended for us to be in the garden and to serve him in the garden. And uh, this is country. Adam was put, created and put in the country, like we spoke about it. And uh, why? Why did God put him there? Uh, it was because it was supposed to be educational. In the book Education, page 20, Ellen White says, The system of education uh, instituted at the beginning of the world was to be a model for men throughout all of the time. So God here was setting up a model of education in the country, in a garden, with Adam and Eve being there. As an illustration of its principles, a model school was established in Eden, the home of our first parents. So the home was the classroom. The home was the school. And this is a very important principle when we talk about education here. The Garden of Eden was the schoolroom. Nature was the lesson book. Creator himself was the instructor. And the parents of the human family were the students. Education, page 20. So this is God's model. God's model is that he is supposed to be our teacher. And we are supposed to be students who are located in a country. Because the country is the classroom. The classroom is the garden. The textbook is nature. And we become the students. And um, this is a very important point. Country living is not just for spiritual benefits, moving out of the cities, uh, because of Sunday law that's coming and the crisis that's coming. It's more about learning from God, the creator of the universe. It's more about in touch with nature. It's more about connecting with God, learning lessons that you will probably never learn when you are in the big cities. We find uh, Adam and Eve here in a garden where God is now their teacher. Nature 
becomes their textbook. They are studying the trees. They are studying everything around them. And it's such an important part um, of education that um, in our modern day, typical uh, people who watch movies, who live in the big cities, the way of life is educating people away from loving nature. It's, uh, basically, that's it. When I walk with people who are in the big cities, generally speaking, and we're walking through the woods or through the trees or through the bushes or through the grass, uh, hiking up a mountain or something like that, there's always a reaction that comes. Somebody thinks that, oh, there's going to be a snake, and they start screaming, and they start shouting if they see a spider. And I just look at them, and I'm like, okay, what is going on here? And I've come to the realization that children who generally grow up in the big cities have no idea how to act when they're in the country. They just feel so bored. They just feel like they cannot connect. Uh, they connect more with the TV, they connect more with the music, they connect more with the malls, and not with nature. And as a result of that, certain critical lessons that they need to learn in the country, they end up not learning because they have not been associated to work with their hands in the country, to associate it and live at peace with all the wonderful creatures that God has created. They are dangerous ones, but they are not out there to harm you. They are not out there to kill you. And that is something that we need to change in our thinking. After God created man, he created this beautiful, um, I mean, before he created man, he created this beautiful garden, beautiful earth, beautiful sky, beautiful uh, trees. And in them, he had written his character. In the skies, the character of God was written. And in everything that man touched, the character of God was written. So we find that Adam would learn more about God's character being out in the country, looking at the sky, looking at the stars, looking at the moon, the, uh, the sun, um, studying the grass, studying the trees, the various types of trees, the various types of grass, and that becomes an education for him. And not only to his mental capacities, but this education was so broad as we look at it in detail. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 15, the reason why God created a man in a garden is given there. The Bible says, And the Lord took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Uh, dressing and keeping it is associated here with um, uh, working in the garden. You see, country living will not benefit you if you're going to take a wonderful television that you have, flat screen, you know, uh, go with Wi-Fi, and all you do is spend the whole day in your own uh, living room area watching television. It's not going to help you much. Um, what is needed in the country is for you to get out of the house and start connecting with nature, start learning lessons that are critical. When man was created in the Garden of Eden, uh, he was given that garden so that he can dress it and keep it. This is agriculture. We spoke about this um, in other presentations, but here we are just talking about the educational benefits that you get not only in agriculture but also in manual labor when you talk about the dignity of manual labor in other series uh, you are able to go and watch them on our youtube channel uh, you will be able to see that so there is this connection between men and the garden that has to be direct if you have to have a garden try to spend a few minutes in your day out there in the garden connecting dressing it and keeping it this is very healthy and it will help uh, you with developing character. Not only that, but this is education. Educating the physical body how to work. This is physical education, the highest of its nature. Education, page 21. Ellen White says, Useful occupation was appointed as a blessing to man to strengthen the body, expand the mind, and develop the character. Three critical principles that you will get as you start cultivating your hands to work and sometimes office office work can be very tiring you can have a lot of brain um, uh, weariness and as you come home all you want to do is plug on the television go on social media uh, kind of refresh and go and sleep but God's model is the best way to refresh is when you come from work get up go into the garden go out into the country and refresh by cultivating weeding uh, dressing up the garden, uh, planting, preparing the birds for planting, 
And as you do that, it really refreshes you. Not only that, but it educates your body how to work. Your body loves to be out there. The fresh air that you breathe, the negative ions that you breathe uh, when you are out there and working in the garden. You start connecting with your plants. You start learning how to manage the plants. You have to be organized also because there are certain times when it starts raining a lot where you not need to now weed. There are certain seasons where you need to plant. There are certain seasons where you need to prune. There are certain seasons for harvest. And everything has its time and season. And initially when you start working in the garden, you may feel pains in certain parts of your body that you never felt before. But that is education. It is training your body how to work. Physical work that will help you with benefits of a healthy body. Um, uh, it's an excellent form of exercise. Um, it's just amazing in its benefits. Um, if you have never tried it, I recommend for you to try that. Physical education is something very important that you gain a lot when you're in the garden. Garden work, physical work in the garden beats the gym, turn not. Because you are exercising muscles that you never thought you could. And there is that sense of satisfaction that comes as a result of completing weeding a garden. When you look at it, there is that self-satisfaction. Um, it also gives you a certain self-worth. It helps you to understand that you can actually cultivate something. You can actually produce things that you eat in your own garden. And uh, these are things that become benefits when you are mainly in the country. And you may try a little garden in a small spot in the city, yes, but the results are, are way, way better when you are in the country. So that is physical education. And I need to emphasize here, like I mentioned, in the dignity of work. If you take children who were raised in a farm kind of environment, or even your grandparents or your parents who grew up working in the fields, their work ethic is so amazingly superior to children who grew up in the cities because the garden teaches people to work. Like we read uh, President Roosevelt and uh, the presentation we did on dignity of labor, the best products of the garden are human beings, men and women of a certain mind, men and human, women of a certain work ethic, men and women of a certain character who have perseverance, who don't easily give up who push themselves even when they feel tired and they want to give up because there's just a little more before you complete that single uh, 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 seed bed. There's just a little more before you complete weeding. There's that little more before you complete fixing that thing that needs to be fixed. And that teaches you perseverance, completing projects that you start, and very important life skills that are critical uh, to survival. So it's a very important point we are making here. Then the next thing that Adam does is naming the animals. It's, it's a very important one that we find here. Genesis 2 verse 19, uh, he was learning. And out of the ground God formed the man, the beast, excuse me. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. Whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. So Adam here is not connecting with the animals. The animals that God created were never meant to scare us, to keep us so scared of these animals. God meant that we should connect with them. I know there are some people that don't like cats, you know. Um, they don't like dogs. They don't like... So if you're living in a city where there's high security, you don't think you need all those animals. And you can get away with that. But go out in the farm, go out in the country, you'll see why God created cats. And you'll, see, you'll start appreciating uh, the role of chickens. You'll start appreciating the role of dogs when they are out in the country and they are doing the work that God created them to do. For example, a friend of mine doesn't like cats at all. She doesn't like cats. And uh, she basically did not want cats. So when we were in the country, persuaded them, and they finally said, well, let's try it. We had a cat a that they didn't like because of how it looked. It had kittens, about um, six kittens. Uh, it had, and the kittens were cute. So she started falling in love with the cute kittens. And before we know it, cats were in the garden. And uh, I mean, in, in, the, in the farm country home uh, where we were. 
So finally, the cat started killing the rats, started killing the mouse, started killing the snakes, and we saw less snakes coming over, and we just see the cat chewing the snakes. So that was a blessing. Cats were made to clean up uh, around uh, where we were. So, and you also see the role of chickens in picking up certain worms and also biodiversity and the dogs and their role. So all this is part of country living and this is education. It helps you educate, educates you on the animals that are there, helps you understand their importance and not only the animals, but nature as a role. The book of nature would spread its living lessons before them, afforded an exhaustible source of instruction on and delight. On every leaf and forest, stone of the mountains, in every shining star, in earth, sea, and sky, God's name was written. Um, so we find here uh, that Adam was studying a lot of things. Uh, she speaks about both animate and inanimate creation, leaf, flower, trees, living creatures, from the great Leviathan in the waters to the moat in the sunbeam, the dwellers in Eden held converse, gathering from each the secrets of its life. And um, these were the subjects that uh, Adam and Eve were studying in the garden. Uh, education page 22 so when you're out in the country there's always something you will learn I um, mean it's just amazing how many lessons you will learn when you are out in the country even when you are not necessarily going to go out and seek after them and um, this is going to challenge your mental faculties help you understand what this is you'll see creatures you've never seen before you'll see plants you have never seen before and as you study more in the country, you learn that certain plants are useful for medicine. Certain plants are useful for chase away snakes. Certain plants are useful for uh, mosquito repellent. Certain plants are useful for uh, as herbs that attend to different ailments, as remedies. Um, and you'll start seeing the usefulness of onions, not just for eating, but as a, a poultice. You'll start seeing the usefulness of cabbage poultice, uh, potato poultices. These are lessons that you learn because sometimes the hospital is too far and there's an emergency and your child is stung by a snake uh, or stung by a, a spider or something has happened where you need to quickly come up with something that will keep the child in a stable condition before you reach the hospital. And all these things are such important lessons um, that you will learn when you are out in the country. Your mind will be challenged, certain things break, and uh, the technicians are too far. You will need to learn uh, the mechanics of how things work. Sometimes when you start off your car, it doesn't work, and there's no tour guys around, uh, there's no tour company around. You will need to learn how your, uh, your, the mechanics of your car works. You get to learn more things. You get to be more self-sufficient, not dependent on city experts to take care of all your problems. When you have plumbing problems, electrical problems, you'll start learning how to fix. You will start now learning how to be a, a self-sufficient human being. A friend of mine who had just recently moved out into the country was faced with a situation um, uh, where there was, well, a serpent outside, a big one. Uh, a black one that was basically outside their yard. They told me this story. They said, I don't like snakes. But this one was just outside our house. And our parents had moved over to our home. I uh, had just come for a visit for a weekend. And my wife and children were there. And uh, everybody said, Daddy, there's a snake outside. So Daddy had to now come out and kill the snake. So he just said, Lord, you know, I am so scared. He prayed and said, I need to go out and do this. So he took a stick, went out to the snake, and was brave enough to kill the snake. So he felt like, yes, I made it. And he felt he was um, the dad that saved the family from embarrassment of a dad who could not even kill a snake or a spider or just a cockroach. Uh, and that's something that we need to do. So this is what I'm talking about, challenging you to learn how to live with animals and not just be scared of them learning the different types of snakes that snakes are not always there to kill you there's a way you can just weigh them off there's a way you relate with spiders there's a way you relate with scorpions there's a way you relate with these seemingly dangerous animals and monkeys and uh, various types of antelopes you know 
Can you imagine waking up in the morning and you see a springbok just grazing in front of your yard? This is what God intended for us, the beautiful, refreshing uh, nature, the sunset, the sunrise. Um, I mean, more and more things could be said. You know, the mist that you have outside, and as you wake up into this beautiful, fresh air, connecting, listening to the crickets um, outside, and the beautiful music that is produced. And in the morning when you wake up, the refreshing waterfalls, uh, the waters that is moving up, all this are education, educating you about the love of the Creator. Um, and then there's also this emotional faculties that God wanted us to develop, connecting with nature. Sometimes you are so stressed, you don't know what to do. You know, there's been, you have had a tough week and uh, there's so much grief. And as you take a walk out to the country, what happens? You start seeing the birds singing and the flies moving and uh, all the greenery, the scenery just so refreshes you, so heals, so suits. And the sun, as it lands on your skin, it's so refreshing, the fresh air. And all this suits your emotions. Uh, it actually really benefits you emotionally. And as you work in the garden and you connect with nature, it really helps you to develop um, your relationship with the animal kingdom, your relationship with the, um, other human beings. You start seeing that you are meant to be out there in the country. The stillness of the night, the refreshing music you hear of various types of animals, um, that as out there, you will sleep a sleep you have never slept before, where you can't even hear ambulance sirens or police or street um, music. Uh, everything is just so quiet. You can even hear your heartbeat. That is God's ideal for us to have when we're in the country. And I just wanted to mention this as an introduction to a very important part of country living. That country living, you should not just be concerned about the education of your children. You should also be concerned about your education because it's more about you learning to trust God. You learning to depend on God more than anything else in the country. The refreshing benefits of country living emotionally, physically, mentally is innumerable. But there's still more. The Bible here speaks about man being created. And um, the Bible here speaks, says in Genesis chapter 2 verse 19, And out of the ground uh, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And uh, the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a help meet for him. Verse 20, and Adam gave names to all cattle, to the fowl of the air, to every beast of the field. And for Adam, there was not found a help meet for him, for him. So here we see Adam's desire for companionship here being mentioned and God meeting that desire. So this is a trust, trust in God with God's instructions that we find in Genesis 2.16. That man was opposed to each of every tree, but except for the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that is in the midst of the garden. So there's this element of trust. And the point I'm trying to make here is very simple. That country living is going to teach you to depend entirely on God. I don't care how much money you have. Even if you're a millionaire, you will need to learn to depend on God. Because country living is meant to help you to learn. That man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. Securing just the country property is going to take everything out of your, um, your body. I mean, you have to fast, you have to pray, you have to look and feel tired and feel like, I can't find it. And keep looking and trusting God. And you may find certain properties that may not line up with what you want, you know. Friends of ours just contacted us this week. They found a very ideal property and they wanted us to go and check it out. And I know it did not just come overnight. It takes time. It takes effort. It takes perseverance. And it may even take everything on your bank account and clean it up. And you may never even know how you're going to make ends meet. You know, um, how you're going to get uh, maybe off-road car because the car you drive was more meant for the city. Uh, the backies are expensive, and uh, ones with a uh, little higher clearance are expensive. Everything is going to challenge you. And when you are out in the country, you now got the car, 
you now have it at home, you will still be challenged to trust God in uh, fixing certain things that have broken down in the house where you are renovating it. And not only that, it may be even working in the garden, you know, and you planted the seed and you are waiting on God to rain, uh, to bring the rain. So it really connects you with trust in God. Trust in God when you are fearful of dangers, uh, visible and invisible, thinking of people coming over to the farm to rob you of what you have. Um, this is a call to complete trust in God. I know some people are scared of darkness. You know, they cannot sleep in a very, very dark place between the trees. They just think that some animals are going to come out and kill them. This is just, I just can't believe what the movies have done to people's thinking. Uh, God is there and you learn to trust him. You learn to be out in the country where it's wonderful, it's quiet. And you can learn to trust God. And God will take you from one trial to another in the country, teaching you to learn to connect with nature, teaching you to learn to live with nature, and above all, learning to develop a character that is going to have an excellent work ethic, excellent spiritual connection with God, and also emotional connection with your fellow human beings. You'll see how important your wife is because she'll be the one you have and your children are. And you'll appreciate them more uh, if you live in the country with them. Um, so, then let's now switch our discussion to uh, another important part, which is uh, education of your children in your own uh, home. Um, I know the education of children is such an important part to parents, and many of them, that's why country living does not appeal to them. Because they said, well, my children go to school here. Uh, in the city, so I can't stay an hour away from Johannesburg, two hours away from Cape Town. It's not practically possible for my children uh, to be able to attend school and things like that. Well, there's a better way. Genesis chapter 2, chapter 3, three verse 17. The Bible tells us a very important um, verse that we read when we dealt with the dignity of labor. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast reckoned unto the voice of thy wife, and eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, in sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Here after the fall of man, God curses the ground for the sake of Adam. And um, then Adam was educating his children. Well, he didn't have any schools to take them to. He had to educate them right there in his own home. We call it home education. So this home education was out in the country. This is what we call homeschooling or home education. And uh, the critical things about home education is that there's a way to do it in a responsible way. I know that when I talk about homeschooling because of how it's done, like I mentioned in many seminars I've done, people shy away from it. But home education is one of the best models of education that God gave to man. And also proves to be an excellent resource that many people have started considering seriously now in the days of coronavirus. Home education, a critical part, something that you can consider in your own time. There are various ways in which you can do responsible homeschooling um, uh, with your children uh, through Wi-Fi, connect internet. You are able to get all the resources you need. Uh, you are able to get somebody to help your children to study from home. And you have the benefit of staying with them. You have the benefit of being their mother, being the mother, being there for them. And educating them just not in reading books, spelling alphabets and counting numbers and um, uh, learning how to write English, uh, read English or Afrikaans or Zulu or Tswana uh, or any other language that you have. But teaching the children survival skills, real practical skills, which they can never learn from schools. And uh, I'm going to share with you something very important here. Genesis chapter 4, verse 2. And she again bare his son Abel, and Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. So Adam taught his children farming. He taught Abel to be the one who keeps the sheep. And Cain was taught to be the tiller of the ground. We find that at the parents here of, um, of Cain and Abel, were gardeners, and they taught their children to survive. They taught them a life skill to specialize in one area and perfect it until they could be able to live off that particular lifestyle. 
And I see it a lot in South Africa where the Africans community, uh, most of them do homeschooling and they teach their children to survive. We have a farm neighbor who is very good. He said, I've never gone to school myself. And he's just excellent. That guy is just an amazing guy because he's able to do farming at a specific time. He does commercial farming. And uh, he means uh, hundreds and hundreds of hectares of land. He is the one that plants everything. I mean, from the time they start cultivating the soil, using their machinery, how many people he works with. He has less than 10 people that he works with. And I'm telling you, he has many, many farms that he manages. And he's, le and he's just a few years younger than me. And his management skills, you know, you have to have very good organizational skills to be able to do that. And he learned that from home. Good management skills, good organizational skills, good, um, um, not only management skills, people skills, because he has to work with employees, that he has to make sure they produce their work, and also good mechanical skills, uh, where he had to learn how to manage those machines. If they break down, he's the one responsible. And not only does this guy work on, on, on the fields, cultivating them, he also has various types of animals. He keeps sheep. He is into sheep farming, cattle farming, um, goat farming, chicken farming. So he manages all these things and he's just a phenomenal guy. He's always busy with his hands, looks very fit, and is able to get all these things done and is able to survive even during the coronavirus where there's retrenchment because, tell you what, nobody can retrench you from your farm. Nobody can retrench you from that life skill. So you can help your children become very self-sufficient, financially independent. They can have their own homes where they can help to grow their own things. Another family friends of ours who uh, used to work in Johannesburg, they are now in the country. Um, they were able, they have three boys now, and they were able to teach their children to survive. I mean, they asked their children, one of them, I mean, their three boys, two were ready to go to university after they were homeschooled all their lives, yes. They were homeschooled all their, uh, all their lives, especially when they started moving out in the country. And their father said, you know what? I have money. I can sponsor you guys to go to school. But let me tell you the truth. I went to school, and I'm not really using what I learned there. You can go to school six years, five years, and you may come back and not use it. Because, face it, we have high unemployment rates now with university degrees. And maybe by the time you graduate, this unemployment situation will be sorted. But when we read the Bible, we understand there will be bigger retrenchments, economic crisis coming. So what I advise you guys is, let me teach you farming here. He has more than 2,000 macadamia nut trees and uh, avocado trees. And he has a factory where he has exports this. He says, this is a life skill. I'm old. Maybe I need somebody to help out. So this boy started helping out, driving tractors. And one of them said, you know what, Dad? I, I think I will stay here. I think I'll stay here with you. The other one said, well, I want to go and study medicine. And he went overseas to study medicine. The father said, the choice is yours. So the boy who stays with him, I happened to visit with them, and it was raining, drenching. I mean, it was so. And the place where they stay, you have to really know how to drive a four-wheel drive bucky for you to get up the mountain because if you don't the car will not get there and this boy doesn't have a license but the way he had mastered the way to drive up that car navigate those slippery clay soil and navigate them that is a life skill and uh, also managing the tractors of his father and managing the farm just the the constitution of that young man at 15 16 years old um, and uh, his ability to critically think, problem solve, practical wisdom, connect with nature, not being afraid of the animals around, uh, connecting with the creatures, helps to develop his manhood, helps to develop self-worth, keeps him away from the bad influences out there in the cities, you know, and uh, the movies, uh, the drugs in the streets that are ruining our children, the bad music um, that they are listening to, this boy is just, these boys are just connecting with nature. And uh, it's just a real skill. And you are denying your children that real wealth that is found in equipping them with a skill that nobody can take away from them. 
nobody can fire them from surviving on that skill. I mean, that guy lends himself anyway and he can, is able to survive anyway. He does not depend on being employed and getting a salary per month for him to survive. And this is self-sufficiency. The principle of self-sufficiency that we find here that Adam and Eve taught his children. And it may not necessarily be farming. It may not necessarily be that. But it's something that in homeschooling you can impart your, to your children principles that are very important to help them to survive. And uh, there are, there's a boy I met that is about 10 years. The first time I met him is now about 12, 13. And he knew how to plant various types of trees. I mean, he could plant all types of herbs. And he could do various types of trees. And uh, one time I was visiting this couple. It was in the United States. And I met um, this young girl. She was about five, six. And I sat down with her. She was taught to entertain visitors. And she took me. She said, well... My parents are not here. Well, let's go out in the garden. I'll show you the herbs that we have. So she started talking about to me about, oh, what? this is mint. Do you know what mint does in your body? So she started telling me about it. Then after that, she went on to cure, um, various types of um, basil and other types of herbs. And after she was done, well, she said, well, let me take you to our garden. This is going took me through the various vegetables that are there. Then she said, well, let me take you through the trees that we have here. Started naming them, their uses. Then she said, let me tell about the birds that I knew. I was like, ooh, what five-year-old is this? Uh, those are the benefits of country living. And their family had done a, a wonderful, they had turned one of their rooms into a classroom where the children had, uh, you know, shelves and that. They knew that for theory, we come here, the library, a little um, tables where they needed to work. Uh, on their schoolwork and then part of the time spent in the country, excuse me, in the garden, cultivating the soil, learning different types of things. And those children are amazing. Some of, some of those children grew up, went to university because they wanted to study electrical engineering. Um, they took the test, they passed, and they did exceptionally well. They graduated, they are now married. They can be able to maintain a home. They have learned how to clean, they have learned how to cook, they have learned how to make a garden in these days of coronavirus. What they learned is a plus. And this is the benefits of country living. This is the education that you cannot deny your children. And um, these are the things that we can really learn. Even Cain, who was a wicked one, had even taught his children how to survive. Um, if you look at Genesis chapter 4, verse 21, and his brother's name was Jubal. He was the father of all such as handled the harp and organ. Zillah, she also bare Tubal Cain, an instructor of every artifice and brass and iron. The sister of Tubal Cain was Nama. Lamech said unto his wife, Okay, we can just stop there. So you had people that were specializing in different types of trades. There were those who were into gardening. There were musicians. There were those who learned various types of skills. Um, goldsmiths, engineering. You have father of musicians. You have those who stayed in tents. These are practical life skills that you can help teach your children in homeschooling them out in the country. Uh, carpentry could be one of the mechanics. There are children that just like fixing things, you know. And there's plenty of things to fix in the farm. Plenty of things to fix in a country home. So don't deny yourself the education in the country. You can ed be educated away from the stress, the depression that you have. Because when you come back home, you're just so stressed from work. Then you get into your car. There's so much traffic. You're just so edgy. You get home. You're just working into this big block of flats and it's all dry there's nothing refreshing there's just loud music that is just irritating get into your room it's just so sobering can you think of a different situation where you come out of your work and you drive away from the city and as you drive into your country home the scene scenery just so refreshes you as you get into your gravel road you park your car there you get out the birds are singing the creatures are there just the scenery is so refreshing. You get up, walk through the grass, go to your home, and the dogs are there to greet you, and uh, you sit down there. It's just so refreshing. Your garden is waiting for you, and you can't wait to get out into the garden and distress and refresh what I read, whatever needs to be done that day. It is so refreshing. And in the evening, there's a beautiful sunset. There's no music. There's nobody irritating you. Everything is just calm. And peaceful. This is God's ideal for you.
country living and education is just basically saying there's better education out there in the country than you could ever get anywhere else. More so in our time. Teaches you self-sufficiency, good work ethic, emotionally heals, emotionally restores, socially very, very beneficial to you. Take your time to be out in the country so that you can get the best education and all-round education, the education of the mind, the hands, the heart, and the social powers, education of the mental, physical, spiritual powers. This is the education that God desires us to have. I want to finish by reading to you a statement from the book Education, page 22. The Garden of Eden was a representation of what God desired the whole earth to become. It was his purpose that as the human family increased in numbers, they should establish other homes and schools like the one he had given. Thus, in the course of time, the whole earth might be occupied with homes and schools where the words and the works of God should be studied, and where the students should thus be fitted more and more fully to reflect Throughout endless ages, the light of the knowledge of his glory. Education, page 22. God desired us to imitate the Garden of Eden in our homes. We need to be building Edens in our homes. And that is more easily done when you are in the country, where you can help educate your children in the school of Christ. Uh, you can go to various websites to be able to learn more about homeschooling. You can also visit our YouTube channel. There are other presentations we have done there on homeschooling. Um, and many others will come throughout this series uh, in this Facebook Live. So thank you so much for your time. Let us close our eyes for a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for your love and your grace. We thank you for your mighty hands that always works to protect and guard us. May you bless us today with your presence and help us to prepare yourself, ourselves to meet you in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you for watching.